Hey, welcome everybody to our fourth ever live stream. We're the Water Street Blues Band. And this is hey. Talking About Live. We're here every Wednesday at 9 p.m. and the rest of your Wednesdays for the rest of your natural born existence. We've spent over 7,000 hours preparing for this show. <laughs> and we've got all kinds of music to present. Performances, over 7,000 performances tonight. We have a multitude of guests finally that have arrived. And there are a number of distractions that I like to share with you. I'm Paul, and welcome to Talking About Live. Woo! Hey, hey everybody. everybody, how are you doing? <laughs> My name is Rob. I'm the guitar player in the Water Street Blues Band. And over here, I am Sylvia, and I play keys and squeeze. That's uh, the accordion. And way over there, Woo! I'm Paul. Hi, Rob. Hi, Sylvia. Hey, and Paul. I'd really like to also introduce uh, the engineer for our, okay. for our show, Sniffy. And he's Hello. here today. Hey. Hi. Hello, Fluffy. That's for the kids. It's good to do. <laughs> as my mother would say, for the children. For the, <laughs> for the children. So well, for uh, for this week's show, we've got uh, we've got some fresh audio for you. Uh, we're we're gonna have a, a new uh, a new <laughs> tune to play for you. That's uh, that's recorded, and uh, we've also got some live music coming at you. A few tunes and a special guest. We're so excited! Oh, we're so excited! <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be happening for sure. He's in the green room right now, I think. Yeah, Fluffy's taking care of him, so that's he'll good. be fine. He'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Johnny, he, he asked for, uh, uh, our guest asked for uh, 10 he just gave yellow him. Smarties. That's ten. it. <laughs> that's very Canadian, at least. That's all he wanted. Yeah, that's good. That's so good. we gave him the mu mustard flavored Smarties. So why don't we, uh, good time to get we down do to it. that, yeah. It's vintage vinyl time. Yeah, I'm so talking you know, about live. We're mixing it up today. We're mixing it and up today. We have a pretty interesting collection of stuff. Uh, we've only scraped the surface of this whole topic. Uh, so let's get to the first thing sure. tonight. So mm -hmm. I'm a big Beatles fan. Our guest is a big Beatles fan. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is a rare record. Um, uh, this is actually one of those uh, VJ pressings, which was a subsidiary of Parl Parlophone. The American subsidiary of Parlophone, and for some reason they teamed up the Beatles with this guy called Frank Ifield, who is an Australian folk singer. Okay. And Australian folk songs are very similar to the later Beatles songs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's how um, that happened. So uh, this is uh, so. What's this worth? Well, if uh, well, this one here is worth, and that's what we're doing. We're we're going to try and give you the value of these. Uh, so a collector ones. might pay how much for this? Two thousand seven hundred dollars. Two thousand clams. Wow. And uh, then after that, we would uh, we would. That would have been mono, right? That's a mono. That's record. a mono. That's record. a mono. Then this one came out, yeah. and I, if everyone wants to now, you can tell by looking at it, it's sealed, and I'll let Paul describe yeah. that but if uh, you can let us know in the comments it's a guessing game to see what you think this one is worth so if you guys have any idea let's hear some guesses if you're if you're tuning in but it's in stereo and stereo frankly uh, way back when it was awful it was fake stereo they used to pan all the guitars including the bass to one side hard side the drums to the other one and they would try to keep the vocals somewhere in the middle they it just sounded awful most and if you panned right to the right right far to the right you could hear um you could hear ringo smoking <laughs> <laughs> well we don't have any guesses yet but um we'll 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 just let that percolate a little bit mm -hmm. percolate percolate, percolate. Ding, blue. okay ding, what's next ding, sylvia ding, ding. okay our next uh, album is carlos he goes by one name like share so we do have one guess okay and sean uh has guessed five thousand Smackers for okay. the Beatles and Frank Ifield in stereo. Well, you're right. You doubled it, and so drum roll, please. Just uh, as getting closer, it's eighteen thousand dollars. This album could be yours. Wow, that's a way lot of money. Carlos. A lot so of money. this is this is a uh, French musician by the name of Carlos, and as Sylvia said, yeah, it's like Cher or Spock. He just decided to drop his last name, except his name isn't that that unique. Um, but this is a single, right? And um, this is a French folk singer. And uh -huh. considering the value of his bandana, uh, it, the, the thing around his head, it doesn't mm. look like a very expensive record, but it really is. <laughs> well, you know, we, we saw a uh, an album 
an earlier program that was listed for a million dollars, and it was a car- collection of Partridge Family records, and it was posted by um, a band called the Every Ones, who were a cover, who were a, a tribute band for the Partridge Family, and it was listed at one million dollars. So, does that get <laughs> anyone any ideas what this one might be might be worth here? Um, what it's worth might be different from what it's listed. This album is listed at $514,708.69 Canadian. And I think I saw a copy of that in Value Village for $1.98 <laughs> a couple days ago. So, if you, go to, if you find this at a garage <laughs> sale, like you walk up to the guy and you say, I'll give you half a mil. <laughs> He's just going to go, <laughs> not enough, go, not enough. Not enough. Had a stroke. He's going to hold up <laughs> for more. <laughs> Okay, here's another special one, Paul. Tell us about this yeah. one. Yeah, so um, these are that we thank you very much, first of all, to Ron and Beanie Jean from Stratford uh, for sending us this suggestion. We've we've listened to this record very carefully. Mm-hmm. We're familiar with it as well. Mm-hmm. So this is this was produced in 1967. Uh, I think the musical director and artistic director was Lester B. Pearson, who was the prime <laughs> minister at the time. You can see his signature. It's kind of stylistic signature. <laughs> and he's got the banjo player so hovering somewhere over, where is that, Labrador? Labrador, Labrador. northern Quebec, yes. Yeah, I, I think he insisted on that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this mm-hmm. was a uh, promotional record. Uh, was put up by Arc Records um, oh. in 1967. Big... And, of course, This Land is Our Land is is the big hit, which I think a lot of you know. Um, they're called the Chakal, 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 the Chakal. We're going to... We're going to post a link, and you should listen to the track called Canada-USA. Yes, that one, that one but, for sure. Yeah. Did you guys get a chance to hear that? So get around. Oh, yeah, we did. We did. We had some audio uh, fixes on Paul's side there. We can still hear you kind of, Paul, though. So, so I'll explain a little bit about this uh, album is in super stereo, and because it was produced in 1967, it's a special kind of, it's a special kind of stereo um, that uh, required 1,967 uh, speakers to be able to hear it properly. And, uh, uh, of course, very few people had that many speakers. Uh, they really only had two. So the only sounds you could hear on the record with two speakers were the letters Y and, and uh, X. And uh, so it made it a very unsatisfying listen in super stereo. But the stereo one is really, oh really gosh. great because you actually can hear all the audio. Um, <laughs> but we will post, we will post on, our, on our Facebook page uh, tomorrow morning um, the, Canada USA, um, the Canada USA video. And if you listen to it very closely, in 1967, it was um, the band was imagining what Canada would look like if it were absorbed into the United States as the 51st state. And the words are a little uh, apocalyptic. And um, what's amazing, listening to them today with all that is going on today, is we've had 57 years of history unimpeded by progress. <laughs> and uh, in fact, if anything, things have, have gotten worse. Um, uh, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's an amazing uh, listen. At the time, it was probably a, a cute bit of folk music, social satire, but uh, now it has a whole different meaning. It's a great record. Thanks for sending it, it in, Ron. And uh, please send us in your vinyl. Um, we've just posted a clear image of it. I, Ron actually owns this, owns this, and uh, he listens to it all the time still. What's next? All right. So what do we have coming up here? We've uh, we've uh, we've got um, a special uh, guest today, and I'm wondering if uh, we'll be able to talk about that pretty soon. Oh no! Wait a minute. We've got more records to look at. What is wrong with me here? All right. Okay. We do. We have more records. Um, more records. Let's see. More album covers. Ooh. All right. So this is a, um, I'm not sure how valuable this record is, but it's valuable to me. And the reason it's uh, valuable to me is uh, Jimmy McGriff is an amazing B3 player, very funky, um, played on a lot of soul jazz records. And what's really important about this record is that uh, Mel Brown is the guitar player on this record. And 
a lot of people know Mal from his own records, from all the work that he did with Impulse Records down in uh, uh, L.A., but this one sort of flies under the radar, and if you love Mel Brown, um, as we all do, and love his music and want to hear more and more of it and haven't heard all of it, pick up this record. It's, it's very, very cool. Mel's guitar is very prominent on a lot of the songs, and uh, you'll, be, you'll be glad you did. It's a really, really wonderful record. And I think, uh, Sylvia, I think uh, we have a clip of Mel from this era, from about yeah, 1981, when he's playing with um, Bobby Bland. I didn't hear you. On her birthday, right around this time of year, and uh, uh, we couldn't do it this year, so we really are excited about doing it next year, and hopefully we can. Happy birthday, Miss Angel. <laughs> All right, so. I think it's guest is time. Is it guest time? It's is our it? first time. Let's uh, s well. send Fluffy to the green room to <laughs> fetch uh, our guest. Fluffy, uh, Johnny is in the green room. He's lying down. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll get him. Uh, we got a really special guest tonight. This is our first guest, our inaugural guest, and uh, uh, all the way from Wellesley, Ontario, Johnny Sutter. Well, that was our last last party in the before times. So, Johnny, uh, this Hi. is Johnny Sauter. Johnny is a is a very accomplished musician, particularly a percussionist. He's a uh, he's also a, an engineer, uh, both for recording, but also for uh, major construction projects, bridges, dams, internationally. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Johnny's an engineer. He's a producer. He's an executive producer, an assistant executive producer, and a junior producer in his own uh, in his own little outfit. And uh, John, it's great to have you on the show. You've been uh, you've been playing drums for us recently, and you've been uh, helping us prepare some demos of our music. Um, so welcome to the show, and uh, congratulations. You're our first guest. And Thank you for having me. And a new dad. Yeah. Congratulations. So Emberly might, uh, our daughter Emberly might make an appearance in the background you might hear from time to time. Yeah. She's more yeah. than welcome yeah. anytime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. So, uh, you know, John, you've been, you've been around. You've been, uh, you've been on the circuit and uh, you play for a lot of bands. We're very lucky to have you when we can. And uh, so tell us, about, tell us about what you're doing these days and who you're playing with. Well, at the very moment, not a whole lot of people, but um, <laughs> but before, um, well, I have a number of groups kind of on the go, and they're all very different, which keeps it interesting. Um, I have a couple, uh, one original band I'm in is called Elliot and the Audio Kings, which is a blues band, um, yeah. which yeah. I'm sure some of the people will, will recognize it. They're great. Um, we play Ethel's, and we've played the Kitchener Blues Festival a few years, and uh, we formed in 2015. Uh, another band that people might know me from is the Crazy Diamonds, which formed in 2012, which is a Pink Floyd tribute band. And then uh, a spinoff that came after that um, was the Divines, because there's the three female backup singers, which some people around town would, well, oh, yeah. a number of people around town would definitely know oh, them. Yeah. And then they had their band, and then it just kind of there's a lot of crossover of musicians in all the different bands, just because we all work so well together. Right. So. It's great. So a lot Sylvia of... introduced us. Uh, Sylvia introduced us to you, and uh, maybe you could tell us that little story, Sylvia. Yeah. Well, I didn't. Uh, I didn't bring a clip from those days. I'm sure we have them, but uh, maybe in a, a subsequent uh, episode we'll talk about that. But Johnny and I met uh, with the band called the Ziffles, and. Uh, where you used to rehearse, I think it was it in New Hamburg. Um, 
Uh, we were, I think it was in, in Jack's basement. Oh, right, in Jack's. In Heidelberg. <laughs> yeah, in Heidelberg, okay, that's right. Yeah. And it was uh, a berg. Full, it was one of the bergs. Full Oktoberfest. It was October one of Fest. the many bergs around here. Yeah. 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 Full Oktoberfest yeah. band. It was, it was my... a polka band. Yeah. We played yeah. polka music. We polka fied everything. Even ACDC, we, we polka <laughs> <laughs> <Polka-fied. laughs> It was pretty awesome. Yeah. And now we met. Our first gig together was at Conestoga College. Yeah, yeah, it was really great. We had, er, uh, we yeah. had, uh, I think, I don't know, f- quite a few gigs a uh, couple of seasons in Oktoberfest, and it was really a lot of fun. And we had one that was out of town that was, you know, one of the most uh, authentic Oktoberfest experiences. <laughs> Somehow we ended up part of that. Yeah. It was great. So good times. So, John, you live in, uh, it's, it's not pronounced Wellesley. It's, it's the, the pronunciation in the Bergs, it's a different dialect, and it's pronounced Wellesley. Dialect. Is that really true? Uh, it depends on who you ask. Um, <laughs> I think you kind of have a bit of a Wellesley slang to it when you lived here long enough. Right. Um, but, yeah, no, that's I, I have that's tr- home really a lot me. of trouble understanding your accent. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people do. It's, it's got okay. this fabulous uh, FM radio sound there, too. So, so Johnny, um, oh, thank you. you know, you've, you've been playing with so many bands, and how, how, did, you, how did you first get into music? What, what piqued your interest? And how, you know, at what age did you uh, oh, man. get into this? Um, it, uh, it was really from basically day one um, where, yeah, it's hard to say, but it really, I, about when I was about three is when I really wow. started to, to get into it. It's when, like, I started drumming. Um, I'd say around three is when drumming really took off. And then, but I always was fascinated by music. Um, anything rhythmic, I would move to, or um, I don't know. There was something about it. I would hear it. Maybe I would just I would just hear it, and I would like move to it. And I've always been just I've always liked it, and I've always been a bit of a sponge for knowledge. And so, I've always wanted to explore it as deep as I could. So you've been you're a bit of a late bloomer. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three at three. Well, yeah. we do have uh, we we do have a section that we call the Wayback Machine. You and you and Paul have something in common because uh, Paul also started at the age of three. Hmm. Yeah, I was in diapers when I started. <laughs> yeah, oh, I even was, uh, you know, I was I was I, I was, ma- I was making a hundred bucks a gig back then, and I'm still <laughs> making the same thing now. I yeah. gotta do it. I gotta show it. There he is. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> so looks like I had a busy night. I had a lot of necklaces on. You did. That was that was actually our our Mardi Gras show, and that was one of the yeah. uh, that was one of the last shows that we played before the uh, before all of this set in. It was uh, mm-hmm. it was a blast, mm-hmm. and it was at Rhapsody, which is just amazing club. February. Mm-hmm. So Johnny, so percussion was your first instrument, but you play other instruments, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, but, um, drums was my first one, and then it's hard to say what my second one was. I would say probably piano, um, which then kind of it's when I discovered you know melodies, and that's when I kind of the melodic knowledge of stuff. Mm. Um, both my aunts on my dad's side and my mom's side actually, so all of them had um, had a piano at their house. So if we were there, I would probably excuse myself if the conversation got boring and just go plunk away on a piano, even though I didn't really know how to read music and still have, I'm slow at it even today. Um, but I used to just kind of bang out chords and I didn't know any like proper fingering. I would just kind of do things until I got a chord and be like, oh, I like the sound of that. And I would just remember it. And then I would add more to my repertoire. And then I would just kind of play songs out. And then I got a tape recorder and then, you know, learned how to just do record yourself into it and listen to it back. And that was kind of fun. But then then probably bass came after that. Um, Actually, no, it was more like guitar, but I used to um, just play open stringed and like drum on the guitar um, before I even knew that was a thing um, and just make sounds on that. And then I learned chords. And then from that, it moved to bass. And then I played bass a lot with a bluegrass band I was in, oh, geez, seven or eight years ago now at least. And I played upright bass in that at the old boathouse for wow. a number of years. So, so, so that was really fun. We had a gig there every Saturday from three to six. What was, what was the uh, name of the band? Build up a lot of calluses. What was the name of the band? 
the bad bong water boys. <laughs> Guys, I remember that band. And you know, you yeah. know what's uh, you know what's interesting. You could actually take each one of our places. Is what you're saying. <laughs> Oh, Johnny well, can just take off. Nice he can, he can play say, all of our instruments, so that's pretty good. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it you're came sort of really uh, handy later on mm -hmm. when I learned how to record stuff, because then you could you could play you could play all the instruments yourself of any ideas you came up with. Right. So you could demo something, anything you heard in your head, and I could kind of replicate it. And that was that was the fun part. And you have a voice of an angel. Yeah, we really yeah. enjoy Boy, we did some singing. <laughs> Very dark. Yeah, you have a good FM voice. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I've heard one. people say that before that I, I have a good radio voice. Do people even it's know what FM is anymore? I don't think so. So so Johnny, I guess I guess you could you could fire all the bands you play with and just go in the studio and just record all of their all of their records. <laughs> Without Yeah, them. but it wouldn't it wouldn't have the, the nuances of what each player brings to to the table. And that's what keeps it most interesting. I'll have if I played every instrument, you'll know it's me. Which is in its own right, kind of cool because you'll know it's like okay, that sounds like me. That's that's one hundred percent me, which is cool. It's my take on every instrument, which is cool. It's a unique thing, but yeah, I still I still love playing with other people. It's the best. Well, one of the collaboration. One of the more recent collaborations that I think you were on, Sylvie was on, and 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 I I was on. We were really fortunate enough to be asked. Was Lynn Jackson's new record, Lionheart. Mm hmm. And that that was a really fun project, and mm -hmm. and for all of those out there who haven't had a chance to listen to that record, it was released oh I think about a month ago. Uh, check it out; it's a really really cool record. Yeah. Lots of great mm -hmm. songs Buy on it. it. Check it out; it's a great CD. Yeah, one of my one of my um, main collaborators often in in like the, the rhythm world is uh, Scott Fitzpatrick from Guelph. Like we're both; he's the bass player, I'm the drummer. We get hired a lot as a as a as a rhythm section because we just we play well together in many different things and different styles. So, yeah. So it's Lynn or it's Scotty and I on bass and drums for that, and then the whole slew of musicians. The Divines are on there. You guys are on there. Um, yeah. So a lot geez. of the a lot of the community is right in there. A lot of the community is on there. It's a group project. It was for fun. Sure. It was really fun to be part of, and and um, yeah. right right uh, right true to to Lynn's collaborative style. It was so wonderful how she brought everyone together through that album. So if you get a chance, definitely give it a listen. Great. So John, mm -hmm. tell us, what's the plan? <laughs> what's the plan for the future for you? What do you got coming up? Well, I think you're building, um, building a studio. You're in the middle of building a studio right now. Behind my house, yeah. There's a, yeah. There's a space behind our house that um, um, that I'm renovating into my own kind of space, my own little man cave, which is exciting. So I can kind of do my music world out there and then come in the house and be dad. And I think it's yeah, kind I of been a dream and, to, and do, you, you know, to not have it like be, you know, in the basement or, uh, you know, in the house. I can keep it in a separate building. But the benefit, it's on the same. It's on my property, which is great. Really so cool. yeah, and you're you're so introducing Emily is going to have a fun, fun fun playground when she grows mm -hmm. up. I was just going to say that you're already introducing her to music <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I think I've sent you guys a few pictures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I figured start, them, start them while they're young, yeah. you know, um, I, my parents were very open-minded with a lot of music and they had, um, a lot of, they shared actually similar, um, you'd see duplicates of their, um, their records in milk crates in their basement and I'd leaf through it. And that's, that's how I first listened to music. I didn't, that's... we didn't have a CD player till I was like 13, 12, 13 right. around there. Like I was, it was older than you think. I was listening to vinyl cause I, I just didn't have a CD player. Very cool. Well, um, there, there was, there, they have a lot of value now. So maybe one of those famous uh, albums we find in uh, Paul's collection, yeah. you know, you have one of those could be a, so, yeah. So growing I didn't up, have color TV till nineteen. I didn't have color TV till nineteen sixty eight. <laughs> when color TVs became really popular, my parents said, "We're going to wait another five years and get a brand new black and white." Okay. They were very <laughs> frugal. They were extremely frugal people. Well, guys, okay. um, what do you think we ought to we ought to do uh, next? Because I know we're going to have Johnny back, and we were we we're going to take a little uh, trip in the meantime and do a little performance. I think it's yeah. I think it's. Oh. Uh, Time to um, 
Uh, maybe, Johnny, if you wouldn't mind, uh, uh, if you'd like to come back, uh, but if you want to just enjoy the rest of the yellow M&Ms in the, in the <laughs> green room for now, that, yeah. would, be, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. I think we, yeah, we might play... Thanks for getting those, by the way. No problem. We, you know, we've searched <laughs> high and low for them. I know. Quite I say, though, John, I want to tell you is that they've been previously enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. okay. The, whatever that means. That explains it. Okay, I had. I was going to ask something about. Okay, that explains. <laughs> it. Okay. Okay. So I was wondering why. Yeah. Well, and they're all kind of bunched together, all oh. stuck together. Well, yeah, they were kind of in a clump, and I was wondering. They were why in my that. mouth, one it's at a time, no. for a little while. Oh. Okay, uh, Put okay. Down. But it was only like for right. a minute. <laughs> I should have known. I really <laughs> should have known. That. Yeah. And and uh, and we'll 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 see you back in a few minutes. We'll see Sounds you back. good. We'll see you then. Okay. Bye. Okay. We're going to go uh, over a, a, a quick announcement while we're here, um, and we're going to do a little technical switch while uh, Rob talks about this uh, album experience here. <laughs> well, this is um, uh, another vintage record. It's our vintage record. It's a record we released uh, a long time ago, and uh, we, we didn't really... Well, we did properly release it for its time. We did a CD release party, and as soon as... Um, with people, uh, with people, with actual people in a, <laughs> in, person, in, a yeah. <laughs> in, in in a real bar, uh, several of them, and and um, but at the time they weren't streaming services, um, so you would you may you posted a couple of tracks to your own website because there were certainly websites at that point, but there weren't streaming services, so we never really did a proper digital release of this record. So um, last month um, we. Uh, Properly and fully digitally released this uh, this uh, record of ours on about 20 different platforms: Spotify, iTunes. Um, I, I can't even remember all the names, but I think uh, it's. But I, I, I want to. I, I don't want to re-release it. Uh, we still haven't changed the thing, and I don't think it's fair. At the end of the day, it really the, the whole concept was what, mine. What? And oh uh, my goodness, here we are yeah. again. Oh, okay. Okay. No, Sylvia. Seriously, I think this is this is the final version for me. Uh, that you know, it's it's the winner. Bag of Pauls. <laughs> you know what? It's we went through a room full of Pauls. That wasn't bad. I like the bag of Pauls. Anyway, I I've, I did everything on the record myself, uh -huh, personally. Uh -huh. Just like just uh, like Johnny Multi. I know you're very talented. You play all those instruments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna play a tune for you uh, from the record and. Um, this one's called uh, Broken, Busted, and Blue. All right. Room full of bag of Pauls there. We're going to bring your video in in a second, too. Woke up this morning, you said we were through. You disappeared without a clue. You left me broken. You left me busted. You left me broken, busted, and blue. Came back home, there was nothing there. All I could do was stand and stare. You left me broken. You left me busted. You left me broken, busted and blue. Went to the bank to take out a loan. Came back outside, my car was gone. You left me broken. You left me busted. You left me broken. Busted and blue Now the money's gone The bills are due You disappeared without a clue On your way out You broke my guitar You broke it in half Now you've gone too far You left me broken Busted and blue You left me broken Busted and blue You left me broken Busted and blue Wow, I love the sound of that bass guitar. It's gorgeous. What's the name of it? Because I, I know this is uh, this is called the President, and it's a uh, it's a Hofner. It's a big. It's a great big guitar. It's bigger than me actually, but uh, it's good <laughs> acoustically and electrically. And it's a uh, it's a Hofner President. And if you know this guitar, this is the same guitar that Stuart Suff Sutcliffe played in. Um, in the Hamburg days, and it's a uh, it's a big big instrument. It's oh, massive. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. It weighs seven thousand pounds. Well, we are every week we're covering uh, we're covering ourselves. We're playing a tune from uh, from the album Another Life. 
So maybe it's our turn now. <laughs> it is, but this is a song that we recorded at the time. It was a cover uh, of a Pat Benatar uh, tune, and um, it we just shelved it at the time. It was not we 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 didn't we actually didn't really didn't like the song. No, we loved <laughs> the song, but we didn't yeah. like maybe it didn't like her performance. There wasn't enough room. There were other stronger songs. But we did uh, a market survey and we found out that uh, <laughs> it wasn't just gonna it wasn't gonna make the money we wanted. Uh, it was a demographics issue. You can listen to the song and yeah. see for yourself what the issues are. It just didn't work socially. <laughs> Thanks. Right? Yeah. Never been no fragile flower I've always got too much to say Never had much luck with love and romance I guess it's always been that way But I've been seriously thinking About sipping on the velvet gloves I know it's strange but my luck's about to change Cause what we got here is true love, hey A true love you can buy it You know it ain't like nothing else A true love you really ought to try it Owe it to yourself to get you some true The first thing on my mind This is a permanent condition Of a most serious kind Let me tell you baby That you were sent from up above I know it's strange but my luck's about to change Cause what we got here is too low Hey True love you can buy it. You know it ain't like nothing else. But true love you really ought to try it. Oh, it to yourself to get your song. But true love. I called the man at the video store. I said, cancel my membership. I won't be needing it no more. Guys of Mills. To occupy my nights And baby, it's just the right amount of true Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we got through it. Almost got through that, too. <laughs> well, um, Johnny's in the green room. I think it's time for the Wayback Machine. Mm -hmm, I think it's time mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. the three of us to go back into the past, into All the right. dawns Ooh. 
mists of time. Whoa. Come on, get me get me there. There, right. there, we, there are. we are. There are those are our younger selves. Our younger selves. That's right. My dad put me in that wagon and said, stay still for the next three hours. I'm gonna go find the camera. And I really had to pee after that. <laughs> <laughs> That's your story and you're sticking to it. Absolutely, absolutely. And look at Paul. I mean, you know, he's looking very chic with the uh, with the black silk diapers. You know, they're from France. <laughs> I I'm can wearing, imagine. I'm wearing, I'm wearing expensive <laughs> pantaloons. <French> diapers. <laughs> you don't wear diapers. You wore pantaloons from France. How, how, yeah. how very, yeah. how very chic. Well, you know, we've covered a lot of different topics. Um, and Sylvia, you're not getting off that easily. No. <laughs> Look, look at those water wings on that what dress. Did, you know what? I, thought, I think every week there's another comment about that dress. I think it was very stylish for the day. I, so I, I think that was a flotation from, device. I think <laughs> if you fell into uh, you know, your bath or a river or the ocean, that uh, that would protect you for about oh, uh, three hours. Good. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about today? Well, well we've, covered, we've covered instruments, our first instruments. We've uh, mm -hmm. covered our first gig. Yep. Uh -huh. And and I think I think this I think what we said we wanted to talk about was our process of songwriting. Songwriting. And I, and I think I think what drives our songwriting is sheer panic. panic. <laughs> oh, okay, so if we're gonna talk about that, let me tell you a story. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know you've got. You that. know, we 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 played mostly uh, covers for a long time, and when we first got together, and we never really thought of writing music. But I got a phone call from a friend of mine, Jeff Soltisiak, at CTV in Kitchener. And he said, hey, Paul, I've got this great opportunity for you guys. Um, we're doing, I, I heard that you guys have got a little band together. I think came out and saw us. And uh, we, were, we were getting some coverage on CTV at the time as well. And he said, I've got a great opportunity for you. I've only heard you play once. But I'd like to put you on a national television <laughs> that was his show first, that was his yeah. first for an extended Nationally period of time syndicated on a weekly TV. basis. And uh, so this is only comes around once in a lifetime, Paul. Will <laughs> you do it? And I said, absolutely. So uh, I went back and told Rob and Sylvia. We got all excited. Okay, so we're going to learn a bunch of covers and all that kind of stuff. So I remember calling Jeff back and saying, Jeff said, send me, the mater send me a list of the material you're going to use so that we can all check it all out. So I sent him a list of the material. And he said, uh, he called me back and he said, uh, it was about a, it was, a, it was about a week or so, maybe a week and a half before the show, we were going to start taping the show. And he said, you know, Paul, we can't, we're not going to be able to uh, to accommodate you with covers. Uh, the royalties are complicated and all this kind of stuff. Um, so we want you guys to Budgets. come and play all of your original music. Uh, and of course, I said, sure. And we had no original music. So <laughs> within a span of about 10 <laughs> days, we had to write the entire Another Life record <laughs> and then go into studio mm -hmm. and and perform it so we we got all our ideas together um wrote the songs and and um and that's how our songwriting career got kicked off and you know what's what's great about us is that we've always had a lot of freedom except for me rob and sylvia have had a lot of freedom to write but i've had to be very prescriptive in my writing <laughs> no we've had uh, we've had a lot of freedom to bring in material from all over the place and ideas and notions from all over the place so you know our music from very early on was was really a kind of an interesting hybrid of of rock blues um some latin some latin mm -hmm. beats um really melodic stuff i think for us we're really interested in melody both instrumentally and vocally um so we had a lot of fun writing this material and we're going to talk about it tonight but you'll see that there's some there's some tunes that we play now but they were the original conceptions of those tunes so um let's let's get sure. start getting into that yeah we got a couple of uh, short videos to give you a taste of that this was on ctv it was syndicated across canada for every i think it was saturday morning and we were like the uh house band almost. the house band for the uh for the talk show and uh for two seasons like for, for yeah, two years yeah, just <laughs> just like yeah. uh, paul on um uh, the other paul on uh, the late show and uh, Dave Coulter's on drums on these on these videos. So if Dave, uh, you're out there and hear this, uh, thank you. And uh, yeah, memory it was lane here. Amazing playing yeah. with you. Yeah. Lovely touch. Lovely touch, David. Oh, and then there's this promo thing, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> this was the uh, this was the uh, the taping session. Like this is the whole taping session. We have all the tapes. This is the sound check. 
that's that's Rob. They're babies. They're all babies. I'm scared to death. I'm scared to death. <laughs> Johnny and I were talking about that shoulder thing. I'll have to ask him about this later. Watch. Sylvia has a nervous tick. She always has to raise her shoulders to her ears. Just got to get loose. Oh, and there he is. He was busy with producing. Yeah, again. he was producing our uh, records way back, uh, way back. <laughs> he was quite young, but uh, anyway, he's still with us to this day. Uh, he's still on. He's still on payroll, <laughs> uh, even with the whole thing. We have kept him on. He's on uh, care roll. Yeah. <laughs> and we have we so have I one hope more. You enjoyed that. We have one more, Paul. Um, oh, and, do we? And this song, this song is a song um, that we recorded for the we, the first song you saw. The next to you uh, made made the cut. And we actually uh, put that on the CD about a year later when we went into the studio to do the Another Life CD. But the next song we're going to play for you, um, uh, clip we're going to play for you, uh, was one of those songs. Rob like, vetoed it. Rob well, vetoed. It this song from the CD because it was mine. Yeah, that's right. I, it's, it, Paul's, it's your song. It's out. No, not, didn't make it. Didn't make the cut. Sorry. No, you didn't like the. You didn't like the middle eight. The the, the turnaround. The I didn't like the turnaround. Yeah. You didn't have one. You didn't. No, no. You didn't have middle eight. Didn't, you said first you didn't like that it had a middle eight. You should have a middle eight. <laughs> and then you didn't. But then I tried to do a middle eight, and then you didn't like the middle eight. Then you didn't like the turnaround. You just nixed the whole thing. So, I just and you can the see thing. the tension here on yeah. TV live. Yeah, we we're fighting. <laughs> She palms another cigarette She palms another dream She's wrapped in polyester But she's acting like it's me She's propped at the Gee Coochie bar This is uh, fresh from Magic Cuts <laughs> At 6 a.m. tomorrow She'll be watching out again Right there. <laughs> well, so, I think it, yeah, that, that I too it was perfect. I yeah, it was no, perfect. It, it still doesn't cut it. No, so I wouldn't uh, put that on a record. And we have a reason for bringing up that particular song. And when we bring Johnny back, we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that, that was really a great experience. I used to. I remember I drove Jeff nuts because when we were <laughs> recording that, I we were in the studio, and I was just. I was just starstruck by being in that studio. And I was imagining that Seinfeld was taped in Kitchener in that studio. And I kept asking about that. Finally, he told us to leave the show. <laughs> well, there was a boxing ring in the studio. They, they had a game show uh, and they had the set. Does already anybody set up. remember that from CTV? Anyone? I, I, I'm not sure. But okay. like, we, we were under tremendous time pressures because they brought us into the soundstage. And next door was when the live news was going to be uh, it was it wasn't on t it wasn't being taped it was live so we we had a very prescribed time to to do like 17 songs and they had to get them down and boom we were out and we had to move our equipment very quietly and not shut the door behind well, us like i can't remember loudly. the name of the the talk show or game show but if you let us know in the comments if you remember a local ckco tv show that was hosted in a boxing ring cuz it rings a bell i just don't remember the name of the show and if you remember I that show, that's, <laughs> let Lisa us know in the La comments. Lisa LaFlamme was doing the news locally back then. Yes. I know Lisa, Lisa LaFlamme, you know now, is the, I think she's the national anchor for CTV. Yeah. And uh, she was in Kitchener at the time doing a thing. I remember bumping into her in the, in the corridor and asking her um, if she'd marry me. <laughs> and she said, no, she's still not married. Yeah. Aww. Aww. Well, I think uh, you know. Before we uh, get back, get back to Johnny. Maybe we were going to do a, a couple, couple more tunes. tunes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who's going to start off this time? Do you want us to start, Paul? Oops. Yeah, you guys go ahead. <laughs> well, um, this is um, this this section is going to be some old songwriting. Paul's going to do a song we're that's back uh, way off of. Back machine. <laughs> Paul's going to do some uh, a song that's off the Another Life CD, and Sylvia and I are about to perform a song that. Uh, 
We haven't recorded yet, but it, it's a brand new song. I think we've only performed it live twice. Right. This is we're out there on a limb. Yeah, we're we're out on a limb. <laughs> you can you can hear you can hear it being sawn off as we speak. You know, this is a, it's a song about the environment. There's a there's a, a little bit of a political conversation in there, and um, we're we're talking about uh, kind of that relationship with uh, people and uh, the environment, and specifically uh, the kind of power. Um, relationships that exist in uh, who might be the mothers and the children, the impact that uh, the environment has and who has control over all that. So it's kind of working from that point of view and, and uh, spreading out towards more broader environmental issues. So I don't see if it makes sense. We could, <laughs> we could take your comments and, and make some improvements to the tune. of the universe and all of their daughters carry sins of the earth on behalf of their fathers but this man is trading clear blue water for high finances he's trading clean air for his children like we had second chances mm, Like we had second chances You could leave it to the children You could leave it to the children You could leave it to the children Or you could take a stand mm, You could take a stand the places we've been better raise up your babies to change the shape we're in because the king is on a rampage with his silver spoon grin well he says he's for the people if your lot's own number comes in if your lotto number comes in Well, you can leave it to the children We can leave it to the children We can leave it to the children Or we could take a stand the blame Oh, we could raise up our voices and let the healing begin Oh, let the healing begin Take mm, a stand Let the healing begin That was great right. <laughs> Needs more cowbell Yeah <laughs> <laughs> We're still working on that one. Thank you. Well, uh, comes around that time. We're going to talk about some uh, another live tune from Paul. But before yeah. we do that, there's a couple of comments I'd like to All mention. Right. Um, let's see. Sean, Sean was asking Paul, do you still have the uh, Mickey Mouse guitar? He huh. said, promise I, us I, you I, still I have do. the Mickey Mouse guitar. Wow. I actually do, and we have a picture of it. It's not here tonight, but um, I've got it framed. I've got it, and uh, I kept it all this time. I'm I was gonna playing find it, it up until you. I think I played it in the first blues festival. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I want to say I want to say Thanks, a couple shout shout outs to other folks. Uh, say hi to uh, John and Rebecca. Thank you. Jo hey. Rebecca remembers the boxing ring, but she can't remember the actual Great show. show. Okay. But well, so we'll we work didn't we that. didn't imagine it. It actually really existed. So Frank's out there. Hi, Frank. And uh, uh, Deb, um, thanks, and thanks for the nice comments about the tunes. Um, but speaking of tunes, I think we have, I think we can bring uh, Johnny back from the green room, we right? Is Paul going to do a tune yeah. for us first? I think oh, sorry, Paul's going to do a tune. Yeah, oh, sorry. I'm going to do one too? Okay. Yeah, yeah right. why not? Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to do one that, uh, that Rob invented, um, uh, which I love. It's, uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, what's it called, Rob? It's called Hit the Wall. Hit the Wall. <laughs> Oops. Um, so uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly depressing song, but it's got a nice melody to it. And uh, here it is. <laughs> the blues, they creep up slowly. Coming one step at a time One day you're happy with your baby Next you're putting in time Before you know it, brother You know you're gonna fall Mind is bent, your body is spent You know you've hit the wall She's not caring anymore She's playing you for a fool Love's grown cold Your story's old And you know she can be so cruel Before you know it, brother You know you're gonna fall Mind is bent Your body is spent You know you've hit the wall no use in trying, no use at all. Just feel like crying, you know you've hit the wall. Ah, oh. forgot the rest. Really love it. <laughs> yeah, really great. love it. Before That's a that great, way. great version, Paul. And you, you sing it so well. I could never, I could never sing that tune. So I'm so glad you can sing those words. Very yeah, cool. I sing that song, and then I I need a, I need to take a, a Prozac. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, if we can get uh, Sniffing Fluffy to go and uh, find Johnny in the green okay. room, we go, can. Uh, go, go get him. <laughs> He's Fluffy, so go cute. Get, He's so go grab, cute. Go grab Johnny. No, Is just tell coming? him it's time now. That's time now. Look, the contract. <laughs> what time is it? It's a contract. <laughs> yeah, it's a contract. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here he comes. He comes. Oh. Oh, there's Johnny's younger there he self. Is. There is. Right Were you in the Wayback Machine? He he must have been in the Wayback Machine. That's an adorable sweater, Johnny. I love the, that. I love is Bert and Ernie. That's so cute. Is the is the That's nose so actually like a stick-on thing? I no, know. it's it's stitched in there. Like it's three-dimensional. It actually sticks out. Wow. That's yeah. beautiful. Cute. Do you still have that sweater? Uh, well, funny. Uh, I should have I should have went upstairs in the into my closet because. I actually have a oh my um, goodness a new version of that shirt <laughs> that's an adult size. Oh, you're kidding! That's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. Wow! Wow! So it's oh, almost there. Yeah, you are all went, grown up. It's extremely tight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wish we. I wish I knew where that the original of that went to. Um, my mom and I have and have talked about that, and we, we we're trying to. We must have lent it to somebody, but we never got it back. We you know. Don't know. It's kind of a mystery. Well, but maybe you'll well. turn up someday in a thrift store. Who knows? Or a <laughs> Valley Village or something. Well, uh, but, we can uh, put no, an I do have. I have another. I have a. I have an adult size version of that shirt now. Very cool. Just as a keepsake. You know, it's kind of. Very cool. I'm gonna go to every Value Village in southwestern Ontario and look for that shirt. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. It might be on. You know, you might find it on like, like Marketplace or. Kijiji and then we're gonna or auction it like off that. on the show, and we're gonna <laughs> start. What are we what would really at? be a what would what would be a real bummer is if somebody bought it for like tens of thousands of dollars and I'd be like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Well, that could be in our uh, on our valuable vinyl series yeah, we could start someday. with. Uh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, over the past winter we've been um, uh, mixing some tracks and and some tunes that we've uh, been putting together over time, 
Um, and Johnny is featured prominently on this song, and it's a song that Paul wrote. So, Paul, why don't you describe the song? But jo Johnny's, Johnny's part on it is really, really critical. Mm -hmm. So go for it, yeah. Paul. Well, this, I mean, we, we resurrected that song, Mean Vicious Woman, that we played on CTV many years ago. And I, we were... We stopped playing it for a long time because of the disagreements. But um, <laughs> when, when Rob um, rewrote the entire song from scratch, uh, which is what he claims, uh, uh, we 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 uh, we put it down on track uh, and put it put it just just recorded a demo recently. So uh, yeah, John brought a lot to it, and I think that's why that it made the. I think it's with a singular reason it made the cut. So it's kind of a dark tune, um, not as dark as "Hit the Wall." <laughs> but it's um, actually I was inspired by Sylvia to write this uh, the lyrics for this tune. Uh -huh. We write these songs together, but the, you know one of us carries usually the idea of the tune. You know, the song so, is called "Mean Vicious Woman." Yeah, <laughs> so it was, it was back when back when you smoked in the old days when you smoked when I first met you, and I thought uh -huh. I thought you were mysterious, but you're not now. Uh -huh. um, just uh, like <laughs> just like not trying to just like this. Yeah. So, uh, so John, um, you, what, you, you, you brought a lot to this, uh, track. Tell us, uh, tell us what you were trying to achieve. Well, at the beginning, I remember you wanted something kind of spooky and kind of weird and kind of mysterious. And I, um, I don't remember. I just kind of, you said you wanted something creepy. And yes. so mm -hmm. I took a cymbal and a drumstick and I, um, I put the, the end of the drumstick like vertical on a cymbal right and spun the cymbal but if you get it on just the right angle you'll actually vibrate across and kind of make this screechy kind of screeches across the cymbal and you yeah. can get some really neat effects with it depending on the type of cymbal, cymbal whether it's hand hammered or just a normal cymbal and um you can get creepy sounds on it and then kind of muffle it and change it with your hand and it's kind of a neat it little turned sound. Turned out great, yeah. We were talking yeah. about how we wanted it to kind of, I want, wanted it to sound like like nails on a blackboard. Uh, yeah. A lot of people really connect with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It makes them great want, marketing. Uh, it, yeah. make, it makes them want to yeah. dance. And Corey Barnes uh, did a lot of work on this as well. He did a spectacular job. We, uh, we, we, we really had a lot of fun recording this track. So, and I think, there, I, think there's a, I think there's a spot in the track where we reversed the sound of a cymbal crash. Yeah, okay. you did. All right. Yes, we did. Yeah. See if you can spot it. All right. So we're going to try. And I think that uh, spooky sound is uh, close to the beginning of the song, if not at the beginning. Let's see. It almost reminds this. me of like, a, like an old squeaking like gate at a big like haunted house or something. It's very. Right. And it was, we, we worked hard on getting the pitch right for it. So it turned out great. Rob also did some terrific, uh, terrific uh, atmospheric guitar playing here. Um, and uh, so let's, uh, yeah, Fluffy, let's, let's roll the track, man. Come on. Come on.
creepy song. <laughs> so that's a little bit of fresh audio from the Water Street Blues Band. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's called Mean Vicious Woman. Thanks, Johnny. It's that all, was it's uh, all true. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great job on that. Well, we're, we've gone over time just a little bit, so we might as well hang out together. And, uh, but first, yeah, first yeah. we want to thank John for being on the show. Absolutely. And thank you, for your, thank you for all of your contributions. <laughs> To oh. the to this effort, and we hope we can uh, have you back. No, we love you, John. We we to a certain extent we love you, <laughs> and uh, and it's great to have you in the show. Congratulations with your new family, and uh, we wish you the best. And we'd like to have you back on the show, um, if if we can negotiate, if we can do a, a good negotiation. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a tour of the studio someday. Yeah, we're gonna talk to the government. We're gonna see <laughs> if. Uh, we're going to talk to the government and see if you can come back on the show. Uh, we'll see what happens, okay? <laughs> okay, John? Great. Thanks, everybody, for joining us uh, tonight. And uh, we've, had a, we've had a little bit of a rumbly road through, uh, through another first for us <laughs> having and, a guest. And I think next week, uh, what are we going to talk about next week, Sylvia? Um, I think next week we're going to maybe have some more live music. For sure. We're going to see if we can uh, round up, uh, bribe uh, another guest mm -hmm. to, to appear on this uh, show. And I think Paul's going to talk about get-rich-quick schemes. With final? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about schemes, ideas, <laughs> options, <laughs> options people options people have. Um, uh, and and uh, I think we're also going to play some more live music. And we're gonna we're gonna give you some more fresh audio. So thank you so much for joining us. We've gone over time here. Thanks, Johnny. No Thanks, problem. Johnny. I realized I had my mic off there. I forgot to hit the unmute button. <laughs> <laughs> Classic <laughs> rookie mistake. I oh. bit fluffed at that. So yeah. you know yeah. what? Yeah, we, we've had fluffy. some we've yeah. had some fun uh, times even with our uh, with our technology tonight. So we're going we're gonna yeah. actually do a special program just on how it all comes together one of these days. Well, I think it's come. Time's come to the show to say good night and uh, to oh. pack up, All right? right? Time to pack up, guys. Time to pack up. Wow. If you notice very carefully, Paul lifts not one thing. Good night, everybody. Good night. Be well. We're the Water Street Blues Band, and this has been Talking About Live. We come at you every Wednesday, 9 p.m., same bat time, same bat channel.